Well, um, we're in a very difficult external environment. The global economy is going through great turmoil right now for two principal reasons. First of all, because Europe is in a total financial mess. Um, countries like Greece, Italy, Ireland, Spain, Portugal are all facing huge financial difficulty because basically they borrowed too much money over the last, say, 10 to 15 years. And that r rose their public debt level to a very high level. Now investors are wondering whether they can sustain the payments. So that's causing great churn. And governments in Europe are really trying to come to grips with this, but they haven't reached a consensus how to manage it yet. The other reason, is, of course, is the little charade we just saw played out in Washington over the, over the debt ceiling, um, where the U.S. is fully capable of paying all of its bills on time and will be from here to the horizon if they get the right together to rebalance their budget over the coming, say, five to seven years. But people were using the debt ceiling as a political tool to try and assert their authority in Washington. And the president didn't do a very good job of seeing that coming and having a plan for it. So we've just gone through the position of the Americans almost running out of borrowing capacity. And they have a $1.3 trillion fiscal deficit right now. So it's not like there aren't fiscal problems in the United States. So the combination of what's happening in Europe and the, and the, sort of the politics around the debt ceiling in the United States, and then the downgrade by S&P, has all led to a, a huge amount of uncertainty and, and a loss of confidence in the global economy. So this is really a confidence play. It's substantively things are no different than they were two weeks ago. But in terms of confidence, there's been a huge loss of investor confidence around the world. Well, along those lines of following the U.S., how closely are we tied to that situation? We are as deeply integrated in the United States economy as anybody in the world. I think Mexico may be a bit more integrated because they do about 90% of their trade with the Americans. But 70% of Canada's exports go to the U.S. Uh, half of our imports come from the United States. There's massive investment flows every day. So we're along for the ride. We're part of an integrated North American economy. And no matter how well we do at home, we're always going to be affected by events in the U.S. and around the world. So what's, what's the outlook for the Canadian economy based on, based on the global situation right now? Well, we've been forecasting good but not great growth for the last year, and we've seen no, no reason to change our forecast. I mean, it, it fluctuates quarter by quarter because we do a quarterly update. Um, basically, within Canada, there's two major forces that are leading to deleveraging. Governments are on a path now getting back to balanced budgets, which is absolutely essential. And consumers are being a little bit more careful with every dollar, so they're saving about 5% of every paycheck. And the combination of those forces, and we got pretty high levels of personal indebtedness as well. So you put all those things together, internally there's a small withdrawal of stimulus going on. So under normal circumstances, Canada could probably grow, say, between 25 and 3% annually. We're forecasting growth of about 2.5%, so the bottom end of the band, but being shocked constantly by all these external factors. Positive side, you know, by commodity prices. So you look at the oil patch, you look at metals, you look at fertilizer, for example. That's tough on farmers, but it's really good for the fertilizer industry. Um, we've got positive shocks and therefore a strong dollar, but on the negative side we have all, the, all those difficult external factors plus the fact that there's deleveraging going on within the country. So what's, what's the forecast for the Canadian dollar then? Well, our forecast is that dollar is going to stay a, a strong currency from here to the, you know, into the foreseeable future. So our formal forecast is at about a dollar four, averaging over this year. But as we've seen over the last five days, you know, it went from a dollar five down to uh, almost to par. So it got almost down to to par against the U.S. dollar. Rebounded yesterday, so we're, we're back to a dollar two. We're we're pretty confident that the, the dollar is going to stay a, a strong currency, and therefore exporters and producers have to adapt to that reality. It means import costs are down, but it means you don't get as much for your exports to the U.S. market and to other other countries around the world. So. Based on that, and you mentioned moderate growth, so how, how delicate is this situation? How delicate is our recovery right now? Yeah, it, we're in the midst of a very wide band when it comes to risks and uncertainty around the forecast. I mean, I have a high degree of confidence that we're on the right baseline track for our forecast. But uh, any negative shock can come along and we can have the kind of events we've seen the last three or four days. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here Wednesday, August the 10th. Uh, on Friday, markets collapsed. They collapsed again on Monday, and yet yesterday they rebounded by 4%. If, if you look at equity markets, so it's a, it's a, we're in kind of a fragile state right now, because people don't know what the end game is when it comes to the U.S. fiscal fiscal deficit plan, 
more importantly to Europe. I mean, Europe is really the wild card right now, where countries are lining up, uh, looking for a bailout for the other European governments from the ECB and from the IMF. So it's a delicate state right now. And the heightened anxiety you see in people's you know, attitudes reflects that. So how much, how much of a danger is inflation or deflation? Um, I, don't, I don't see either, frankly, as a real danger right now. I mean, in, inflation in Canada ticked up to about 3% a couple of months ago, all in, when, when oil and gas prices were high, well, oil in particular, and when we had a strong dollar, um, and, and, and um, the Bank of Canada was signaling they were going to have to start increasing rates. Now, with the shock the global system is sustaining, uh, we think the Bank of Canada will sit on the sidelines, but we still have some kind of core inflation of about 2% built into our system and oil prices have moderated the, over the last two weeks. So yes, there's high prices on one side. Uh, the, the Bank of Canada knows, knows what they're doing. They know that they're walking a tightrope. They will not allow our economy to slip into deflation. That would be an ongoing bad for us as it is for everybody else in the world because falling prices means consumers sit on their wallets and we don't want that to happen. So, but at some point rates will have to rise, but right now the Bank of Canada is going to have to moderate any increases over the course of the, the balance of this year to ensure that we're not withdrawing any stimulus from our economy at a time when we're very fragile. All right. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.